So this is about formation, really, the boot camp, and, yes. and what we're doing here with the Knights of Lepanto. We, we're, we have a father and son encampment, So, and the fathers are really the ones running the encampment, so they're taking responsibility for the formation of their sons. And um, little by little, we're tre- trying to teach both the fathers and the sons the virtues of, of chivalry. Um, you know, taking responsibility for your actions, behaving in an honorable way, courtesy, strength, generosity. Um, and while the fathers are trying to teach their sons, they're learning it themselves. Right, absolutely. So, well, you know, one of the things that, that I think is, uh, that I found that seems to work well with the boot camp approach is that, you know, the hands, for example, need to toughen up over time to handle monkey bars or rope climbing. You know, an average person who doesn't really do much with their hands is going to get on those monkey bars back there or hit a rope to climb. And they'll do it a couple times, and their hands will be sore. They'll be red. They'll be raw. They could develop blisters because the conditioning isn't there. So, you know, you'll find that also with uh, any kind of sport, the muscular endurance, the conditioning necessary for that. Well, when it comes to spiritual life, formation, training, teaching your son to be a man... You know, I'm a big believer in the phrase that a man is not built in a day. And so we can't expect to just take a boy when he's 14 or 15 or 16 and all of a sudden sit down and have a talk with him and help him understand right there this is what a man is and have it take hold. It takes time. It's a conditioning process. It's a training process. It's like teaching my boys here to be able to handle, you know, um, what comes their way with life begins when they're young. Again, as we mentioned earlier, many men have kind of dropped this ball and let this go. And, as you said, Father passed it on to the schools or other aspects of society to, to Feminism, deal with that. They, Feminism. They, men, men have just... Oh, we've, we've lost... Capitulated, rolled over like, like they really are as guilty sure. as, the, as the world wants them to think. Absolutely, we have. And, and uh, you know, I, I love the expression an old spiritual director said to me one time, is that a man can be like, a, I'll kind of paraphrase here, like a ball of fire, an aggressive something in him. That ball of fire is not bad unless it is misdirected. Then it can right. it can it can roll around, igniting all kinds of things, and causing great damage and chaos and destruction. Or if that ball of fire gives itself over to God and has proper training, it, God can shape that ball of fire into a flaming arrow yeah. to pierce the darkness and pierce the heart that needs to be to be uh, you know penetrated for the grace of God to flow. And and this is something that men have the ability to do. I think back to World War II, the Normandy invasion, June 6, 1944, when you had thousands of men storm these beaches. You had thousands of men drop behind the line, the airborne. You had thousands of men storm the beaches, in particular Omaha Beach, in a hail of gunfire. And their buddies getting shot left and right. And they kept going. Why? Because they had been conditioned to understand that there was a greater cause, greater than themselves at this particular moment, that needed to be taken care of. Our society needs men of that type of character now. We need it now. We need to have men who will stand up and fight in the political arena, in the legal areas, school situations, secular grocery stores, for example. Yeah. You know, I mean, just recently I was walking through a, a, a grocery store, a department store, one of those super stores, and I had my boys with me, my young boys. There's a magazine rack, and they placed it strategically in such a way that you turn in these three or four registers have to see it. Well, some of what was on this is like what's on many of them. But they don't have to put it right there. They intentionally do this. So I turn. I had my boy step to the side, and I turn back to the cashier. And I nicely but firmly kind of let her have it. Not her personally, but I kind of let out, look, this is not right. Now I've got to go explain maybe if they happen to read something, this is what this is. and This, I mean, this is just not right to have to do this. Put it in a place where nobody's going to see it. Or better yet, don't sell it at all. But could you pass this on to the manager, please? And I made a big enough deal not to look like a crazy wild man, but enough that the people in line could see. Because I wanted them to understand that as a man, I'm tired of this, and this needs to stop. And if enough of us men did that, if men spoke out much, much more, okay, we'd see things change. Men have gone silent. And as the old saying goes, evil will always triumph if good men do nothing. Yeah, the legislature here in Connecticut passed a, a measure to force uh, Catholic hospitals to administer Plan B. I heard of that. And uh, you know, the the response against it on the part of you know the average Catholic person, you know, in terms of contacting their legislators, 
was not what it could have been. Yeah. You know. Well, we, you know, we just watch things happen. We watch it go by, we do. And, 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 we, and we complain about. Then we complain about. That's it. it. We <laughs> shake our heads. We say, "Oh, well, that, that's just too bad." We do that with our youth. Oh, these kids. You know, they're just. Oh, it's just too bad. Well, then let's do something. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we started the boot camp idea. You know, Radix many years ago, fifteen years ago, my wife and I started it with that same that same for that same reason. But the whole boot camp idea was okay. Let's get into the hearts of these young men, and let's challenge them physically, mentally, and spiritually, and shape them because we are tired of just letting things happen and people just, as you just mentioned, complaining and kind of shaking our heads and in disgust, but then still sitting there doing very little or nothing. And you know, Father, as you, as you know, the Catholic voice is the strongest voice, yeah, most true. powerful voice in the world. Yeah. You know, G.K. Chesterton the message, said. The message, and also in terms of the numbers. Yes. You know, you, we, you know, we're huge. We're a huge block. Yeah. But we're sleeping, a lot of us. Yeah. And we can't. We can't sleep. You know, it was G.K. Chesterton who said, you know, that mankind would have destroyed itself several times over already, if not for the Catholic Church, right. the voice of the Catholic Church. I mean, the papacy, the office of the Pope, has, has, has even if not, if, even, if, even if not everybody follows or agrees, we, we kind of, shake or or wake up when something powerful comes from rome when the pope says something they debate it in the media and they either tear it he down still has or moral authority even he though people still, may, may may disagree with yeah him. they Absolutely. do recognize there's something there yeah. and it's the office that our lord instituted you know yeah. so so yeah the boot camp idea and things such as this it's taking that something that's natural in a man you know be it aggressive nature testosterone whatever you want to call it and it's shaping and forming it for the sake of mankind for the kingdom of heaven, for the labor of souls, and because the generations to come are going to ride on the backs of what we do now, as has always been the case. And so what we do as Catholic men now has everything to do with what happens to our Catholic youth, who will be adults, tomorrow and down the road. So we have to get busy. We have to support this sort of work. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Here we are, the second one. Ah, the here's, walls. Here's some action. Who's going Who's going to go for it? Let's go, boys. Careful, the, the they haven't been backfilled yet, I don't think. How are you, Jordan? No? <laughs> you won't make that. No, we got to wait till it gets filled up to our... It's probably, what, seven from here then? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a good... Almost nine, eight and a half, nine there. And then this we call Suicide Hill right here. Oh, yeah. That's the end of the end of the course. Yeah, we'll have drills up there as a consequence. <laughs> For those who, uh, who do not know the Ten Commandments, <laughs> this is what their group will have to run up. We'll bring them to this point. Well, now, will we be able to get the uh, gravel? Yeah, in we'll, we'll get it in here. Okay. Well, we can go talk to Father Bonaventure as we can sure. go talk to Father Bonaventure as we, we get, move down sure. that direction. Gotcha. Should I start running up now? You want you want to try, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh yeah. Yep, it's gonna catch up. 